All right, uh, this is Tony Sanders, and what we're going to do is we're going to work through the process of putting a series of questions into a do now so that it can be used with our CPS clicker system. So the first step is to figure out what your source of your questions are. And in this case, what we've done is we have a series of questions that are in a Word document. Here's a do now with a series of questions. We'll be able to copy and paste these questions and answers into CPS. But it's important to know that in the CPS system, you also have the option to include various graphics. Now, graphics can be somewhat tricky because if you'll look here, we have three on this page. I'm going to right click on this one, and I do get the option to save as a picture for this specific one. On the second document, however, second thing, I do not get the option to save, not the way I did here. I had the save as picture. This would allow me to save this rectangle as a separate GIF or JPEG. This one here, as you can see, also had the option to save as. What I decided to do as a solution is the following. I create a PowerPoint file, and in that PowerPoint file, I put all of my geometric shapes. Now, the reason I do this is I can then format the shapes in PowerPoint, and I can make them uh, of a uniform size, as it were. And the one we're looking at here is the original from this Word document, uh, but made larger. Since I could not save this directly, I had to copy it into PowerPoint. So this uh, brought into PowerPoint was smaller, and then I simply grabbed it and expanded the size. But the line is fairly light, and so what I did instead was I created an oval with a heavier four-point rule as the uh, defining line. I made it larger, and this size here, the PowerPoint uh, slide size, is essentially the size in CPS for um, putting a graphic in. So making it fit most of the space here will save you a lot of work at the other end. And we'll work with the clicker software. What we need to do is we need to create a folder for our questions. In this system, usually when it comes up under prepare, it'll come up with classes and students. I don't have classes or students on this laptop, but we're going to work directly with lessons and assessments because then what we can do is create lessons and assessments and then export them and import them so that other teachers can use it. So here we go. First step is to create a folder, and what we're working with is Miss Andrews' geometry class. So I'll create, under this main folder, I have two folders, a technology classes folder with a series of questions that I've created before, and I also have a statistics classes folder here with lots of different sets of clicker questions. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create one for geometry. We'll go to the main root folder, and we'll create a new folder, and we're going to call it Andrew's Geometry Classes. Now we have a folder in which we can put our do nows and other things, uh, do nows and exit slips. So, for example, what we'll do is, in order to have separate files for each of our do-nows and our exit slips, we need to first create a lesson, and then inside the lesson, we'll create questions. So here's our lesson, and we're going to call it do-now 02-03-14, because it'll be for Monday, February the 3rd. This is, this is an option if you want to do this. You don't have to. This is a new set of geometry questions for our do now. 
We'll say, okay, now we have a do now folder, but no questions in it. We can also create an exit slip folder. So we'll go up here, create a new lesson, and we're going to call it exit slip 02-03-14. This is our exit slip folder. Exit slip file. Say OK. We've got that now. And the next step is to populate these with questions, which will show up over here. To do that, in CPS, next thing is to come up with a new question. Questions appear in various templates. I have one because I know I'm going to have four possible answers. And I'm going to want to incorporate a graphic over here. And my question over here, I chose multiple choice four. And then under template, I chose add graphics. And as you can see here, there are lots of different options. I have question graphic, big question graphic, all kinds of things like that. But I'm just going to go with question graphic as a style here. Multiple choice four uh, is one option. I can have as simple as two multiple choice answers or as many as 10. I can have other types of answers. And then I can have this wide variety of opportunities for different kinds of questions. But we'll stick with multiple choice four. And we'll have this set up. And then we'll be able to use this for the questions that have graphics. So what we're going to do is before we do the do now part, we're actually going to go ahead and create the exit slip question because it incorporates our graphics. We have four graphics. And we need to incorporate them for each of the questions. So what we're going to do is question one involves a rectangle. Now, I have my set of geometric shapes here. And in order to have them as separate files to open, I need to save each one individually. So my rectangle is here. And this is just a PowerPoint presentation I'm calling geometric shapes. But what I have the option to do is to save current slides as separate files. So the way to do that is to use a series of keystrokes. I'm going to use Alt-F to bring up the file option, and then A for Save As. So I'm hitting the letter A. It gives me a dialog box. And what I can do is I can create, rather than as a PowerPoint presentation, I will save these as GIF files. GIFs, JPEGs, PNGs, these are three graphics formats, but I'm going to use the GIF form. And as you can see, at this point, I could create a new name, and I could call this one um, Rectangle. Since I already have it, I'll call this one Rectangle 2. Hit Save, and I get the dialog. Do you want to save everything or just the current slide? So there's the current slide saved. I can go to this one, which is a trapezoid, and I can do the same thing. Alt-F and A for Save As. This one will also be a GIF. And I'm going to call this one Trapezoid. Two, and save it, just the current slide. And this is the process you could do with all of your geometric shapes. So it's probably a good idea to start with your PowerPoint, create or import your shapes, and then export them as formatted GIFs that are about this size overall. Now what we're going to do is we have our question part. And we're going to incorporate this into our CPS question. So we brought that up, and we have a question here. This will be question number one, so that's nice. And the uh, first thing we're going to do is bring in the image. So we have to browse for it. And I created a separate folder, and my separate folder is here. 
And here are my images. The first one I want to use is the rectangle. So I can use rectangle 2, the shape I just saved from PowerPoint. And here it is. So now that looks pretty good. What I want to do now is incorporate the question. And a good default point size is 20 point. And if the text comes in smaller, we'll just increase the size. I'll go to my Word file. Here's my exit slip. Here's my first question. I just want the question. Control C to copy, or I can turn around and go copy. Now I flip over to my CPS software, and I'm going to need to hit Control V to paste, because as I try to right click, that option doesn't show up. I'll put a period at the end, and I'll change it from 11 point to 20 point, and then I have my four options here for multiple choice. This checkbox is in order to signify which answer is the correct answer. Now we'll go through and I will pull each of these answers. First one is oval, control C. The reason I'm going to do this and show you is because sometimes you can encounter small errors in the pasting. For example, I have just hit control V, but my shape doesn't, my word doesn't come up. It's here, higher up I've moved the scroll bar, but it also incorporated a line feed, which I need to get rid of. Also, even though I didn't copy the letters oval, they showed up. Here's my word oval, and I want it to be about 20 point. Next one will be rectangle. Control C, flip back to the software. There it is. I've got the line feed to get rid of. There it is. Do this. And then format the point size as well. All right, I will pause the video at the moment and finish this one off. Okay, we have uh, built the question and I've put in the answers. And one thing I want to point out here is that we have a template and we can change the presentation of this question after the facts. So we've built our question here. Now what we can do is just change the arrangement. So for instance, we have big question graphic. We chose question graphic, but big question graphic looks like this. We might choose this as our presentation instead. We can play with these even after we've put the question together. There's another type of way to do this, question graphic bottom. This is an option. Um, it's just a personal preference. So we'll go with big question graphic. And here are our four answers. This is a rectangle. We need to put a check mark into for B since this is a rectangle. And if this was our only question, we could just hit save. Or we can go to save and next. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this question because in our Word file, each question has exactly the same format, but what we want to do is have different graphics. Okay, so we have our one question, which is actually an exit slip question, but when we created it, I created it inadvertently in the Do Now lesson. So how do we get it from here over to here? Well, it's very easy. All we have to do is highlight the question, and we can copy it or cut it and then paste it. For the moment, what we'll do is we'll copy it, we'll go to the exit slip lesson, click in the major window here, right click and paste. I now have the question in the proper lesson. I will go back here and I can now delete this question from here. I'll get that. Going back to my exit slip, this is also how I can copy my questions. Let's take a look at the question. There it is, and it's with the rectangle as the right answer. We're going to change in the other questions the image. But at the moment, what we'll do is we'll copy the question. So we'll hit copy. I've clicked, and I have paste. This will be question two. Paste again for question three. 
paste again for question four, and my shapes will be different. So looking at my question guide, rectangle, oval, trapezoid, parallelogram. So we'll go to the second one. This was rectangle. Now what we need is for our second shape is the oval. Bring up question two. We want to right click and remove this shape and then right click and browse and pick up the oval. So there's our oval. We can now save. We could also save and go to the next question which is our third question. It says up at the top, question number three. I want to remove this and browse and get our other shape. And oops, we forgot. What do we need? Rectangle, oval, trapezoid. Go back here, get the trapezoid two. Incorporate that. There's our trapezoid. We can hit here, save and next. Go to our fourth question remove this and the last thing we need is a parallelogram and we didn't make a second one so let's see how we do with the original gif very nice okay we have created a specific exit slip lesson we can close this we can go over here to the do now and our do now is up here with these questions and what we'll do is we'll just start it and then That'll be the end of this lesson. So the do now, let's make sure what we have. Each question has four responses. So this is going to be multiple choice four with no graphics. All right, now at the do now, we're going to create a new question. We don't want this style. So we want to change the template to say no graphics. And here we have our four possibles and our question space. Get the first piece, which of the following is not a polygon. Control C to copy. Go to the question. Control V as in Victor to paste and get rid of this piece. Change this to 20 point. And away we go. If you chose to, you could, of course, just type these. You might consider that faster. That's a personal preference. All right, that concludes our lesson. After you have created one question, if you don't have another question, when you hit Save and Next, it automatically builds a new question for you using the same template. Hope that helps you. If you have any questions, we'll see you in school.